The chain rule is a very handy rule and is used to differentiate composite functions. Let's say we had the function h of x, which was a composite of the functions f and g. Which we can also write as f of g of x. We can think of f as the outside function and g as the inside function. The chain rule states that the derivative then of our composite h of x would be the derivative of our outside function times the derivative of our inside function. And this works as long as f and g are themselves differentiable. Let's look at an example. Let's say that we wanted to find out the derivative of the function y equals x squared plus 2 cubed. y is a composite function. The outside function is the brackets cubed, and the inside function is the x squared plus 2. So I've written it this way. I've just given the brackets cubed as the outside function, x squared plus 2 is the inside function. And let's just uh, find the derivative of each of these separately. Using the power rule, the derivative of the outside function would be 3 bracket squared. And then using the sum n power rules, the derivative of the inside function would be 2x plus 0, or simply 2x. So applying the chain rule, our derivative y primed would be the derivative of the outside function, which is 3 squared times the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x. Now our box represents the x squared plus 2, so we'll put that back in. And our derivative would become y primed equals 3x squared plus 2 squared times 2x, and if we want to simplify it, clean it up a little bit, we can multiply by the 3 by the uh, 2x, and we get 6x x squared plus 2 squared. Okay, let's try another example. Let's look at example number 2 here. Our outside function would be the bracket squared, and our inside function would be the x squared minus 2x plus 1. So the derivative of the outside function would be 2 bracket box to the 1, or just 2 bracket box, and the derivative of the inside function here would be 2x minus 2. So applying the chain rule, our derivative would be the derivative of the outside function, which would be 2 bracket box times the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x minus 2. And our box is represented by the function x squared minus 2x plus 1, and then times 2x minus 2. Now that's our answer, but maybe we can apply some factoring to clean it up a little bit. Looks like we can take a common factor of 2 out here, and this looks like it could be factored with trinomial factoring. Okay, so if we did that, we would get 2. Now this one would be x minus 1 squared, gives us that term x squared minus 2x plus 1. Factoring out a 2 here, we would end up with x minus 1. So we can multiply the 2's together, which would give us 4, and then we'd have x minus 1 cubed. We'd have 3 of those. And that would give us a more complete solution. Now there is another way to do this problem without using the chain rule, and it might be a way that we can verify that we've got the right answer. Let's take our original question, and we'll expand it. We'll write this out twice and ex distribute across the brackets. So to expand, we'd multiply the x2 by everything here, we'd multiply the negative 2x by everything, and then we'd multiply the 1 by everything as well. 
And if we did that, we would get x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x squared minus 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 2x plus x squared minus 2x plus 1. Collecting like terms, we'd get x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 2x cubed would be minus 4x cubed. x squared plus 4x squared plus another x squared would give us plus 6x squared. Negative 2x minus 2x would be minus 4x. And then we'd have plus 1. Okay, let's take the derivative of that. So y primed, using the power rule and sum rule, would be 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 12x minus 4. Factoring out a 4 would leave me with 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. And it just so happens, if you expand x minus 1 cubed, you'll end up with x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. So we've got the same answer, just trying two different methods here. Okay, let's finish off with one more example. Here we go. We have y equal to the square root of 25 minus x squared. Well, the first thing we can do is we can rewrite this as y equals... 25 minus x squared all to the one-half. So our outside function would be the brackets to the one-half and our inside function would be the 25 minus x squared. So the derivative of the outside function would be one-half bracket all to the negative one-half. And the derivative of the inside function would simply be negative 2x. So applying the chain rule, our derivative would be the derivative of the outside function, or 1 half, bracket the box, which I'll put in right away now, minus 25x squared to the negative 1 half, times the derivative of the inside function, which is minus 2x. Here you'll notice that the 2 here and 2 here can cancel which would leave me on the top of 1 times the negative x. So that would equal negative x on the top, and then we can just shift down this 25 minus x squared to the negative half to the bottom, the denominator, and we'd end up with the square root of 25 minus x squared on the bottom. And there you go.